There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with uh, not a mini book haul. This is not massive, but an average size book haul because I want to finish up my book hauls for 2018. I'm going to Canada on December 22nd. I'm filming this a few days before that. I don't know when you'll see it, probably after Christmas, but who knows. But I have a bunch of books and the mini book hauls just weren't, weren't going fast enough. So here's a, a normal size book haul, probably end of year. I will buy a ton of books in Canada, I'm sure. I'll probably film that Canada book haul sometime in January. Anyway, so without further ado, let's get started. First uh, five books I got for about a dollar or two dollars a piece at a used bookstore near my house. I've taken you there and talked about it before. Three by Mary McCarthy. Intellectual Memoirs, New York, 1936 to 1938. I have not read one word that Mary McCarthy wrote thus far, but I have her famous novel, what the hell is it called? The Group, on my shelf. That's a perpetually uh, uh, coming soon in abeyance on hold buddy read with and or beyond the pages. In the meantime, I picked up her memoirs. Some essays, the writing on the wall and other literary essays, and a book of short stories, Cast a Cold Eye. If I, I will probably be editing this in Canada without the benefit of my regular iMovie software. I'm using an alternative software that's available on my iPad, but I never did figure out how to put in the text insertion, so you may just have to watch me read, but I know some of you kind of like that. And Britta just turned the volume down. <laughs> Here's the first line of the first story. The story is called The Weeds, and here is the opening line. And this is from Cast a Cold Eye. She would leave him, she thought, as soon as the petunias had bloomed. Mary McCarthy, mega buy. Next, two by a German novelist that I had never heard of. And Britta, I told her about it, and she's not sure that it, it will be a... He's a Sean writer, but Max Frisch, I have... Man in the Holocene and Homo Faber. This is not a gay novel. Calm down, people. Really had to hold my nose to buy a movie tie-in edition. But anyway, the first one is translated from the German by Jeffrey Skelton. Homo Faber is translated by Michael Bullock. Yeah, this is interesting. I'll read you the first two paragraphs. The second paragraph is only one sentence. And the first paragraph is quite short. It should be possible to build a pagoda of crisp bread, to think of nothing, to hear no thunder, no rain, no splashing from the gutter, no gurgling around the house. Perhaps no pagoda will emerge, but the night will pass. Somewhere, a tapping on metal. That kind of grabs me. And I noticed there's some weird stuff going on here with different sections in different fonts and shading. So, kind of interested to see what that's all about. And Homo Faber. Not an interesting opening sentence, so we'll just carry on. And even though I have not read the Barbara Commons novel that I bought in Saskatoon in August, her most famous novel, the vet's daughter. I did a total cover buy. Blame it on Twitter. I have no idea whose tweet I saw, but I saw the cover of this one and I immediately bought it. Enigmatic title as well. Who was changed and who was dead? Look at that cover! <laughs> it kind of matches my shirt. I didn't plan that. And the, and the green wall over there. This novel about the, a family in an English village begins mid-flood, ducks swimming in the drawing room windows. And I think that's the opening. Yeah, so the opening sentence, the ducks swim through the drawing room windows. I guess you can see the flood in the cover if you look at it with that in mind, eh? The New Yorker, a couple weeks ago, about a month ago, published a poem by a poet I'd never heard of before, Gabriel Calvo-Caressi. Calvo-Caressi? 
And uh, I bought her most recent book of poetry because that's the best poem I've read all year. I'll put a link in the show notes to that poem, but it's not in this book. But hopefully I'll enjoy the, the poems that are here. This is called Rocket Fantastic Poems. And Gabrielle Calver- Calvacaresi is interesting, isn't she? Uh, I won't try to talk about her life story, but it's pretty interesting. So check out her Wikipedia page. She's had some significant health problems that have deeply uh, influenced her writing. This was a gift from Anne. I think what it was was a trade. I sent her a book that I didn't want uh, several months ago, and she sent me a book that she knew I really wanted because we both fell in love with this writer. This is a novel, another novel by Cynthia Proper Seton, A Fine Romance. And this came uh, in the mail the other day. Thank you very much, Anne. And this one was published in 1976. It is a comedy of manners with sparkling, quirky talk. Okay. I think by the time you see this video, you will have seen the joint review that Charlotte of Tired Mama Tries to Read and I did of Margaret Evans' novel, Country Dance. And this is another novel by the same author. Not turd. Turf of Stone. In the same Library of Wales edition with the same artist. And this is about a forced wedding in a freezing country church. And Ange and Charlotte and I will be buddy reading this hopefully as soon as possible in 2019. Early one February morning, a tip cart, which was plastered with dried mud and driven by a man with one arm, turned out of a lane some eight miles from Salis and journeyed slowly along the main road towards the town. Turf or stone? I'll tell you which one it is after I've read it. Speaking of Wales, when I read that Reese Davis little 1940s history of Wales or nonfiction November, one of the most fascinating, beguiling characters that I encountered within the annals of Welsh history was Dr. William Price. So I bought this tiny little book, bilingual, about this eccentric man. He was a chartist, a surgeon, a heretic, an archdruid, and pioneer in the legalization of cremation in the British Isles. And he liked to walk around dressed like this. And when did he live? He was in the Victorian era, lived to the age of 93. So he was born in 1800, so he died at the, uh, around 1893. The little bit that was in that book just fascinated me, so I had to find out a little bit more and so this will be a little introduction so you welsh folk what can you tell me about dr william price i can't wait to read this it's just uh, 32 pages but like a nice little booklet all right and the remaining books for this book haul are all books that i got at the kinokunia bookstore the one that has the biggest english language book section in uh, of all the bookstores in tokyo using a hundred dollar gift certificate that a class of my students gives me every Christmas. It's gift certificates that are kind of generic. You can use them at any department store. So I've been teaching that class. Those people are all in their late, late 70s and early to mid 80s now. And they love me and I love them. And they've been giving me this $100 gift certificate every Christmas for, I think I'm teaching them for seven years. They were quite young when I started and so was I. (laughs) And for the first few years, I really struggled because I don't know if you know anything about department stores in Tokyo, but there's nothing in any department store in Tokyo that is less than $100. Like clothes or something? No, everything's $200 and up. Tokyo department stores are... Japanese department stores are so expensive. So I never knew quite what to do with it. In fact, I used to exchange it for $100 cash with my good friend Mariko, and she'd take it shopping, and I would use the money for something else. But... When I realized that it was also negotiable, it was also, I could use it at that bookstore because it was in the same building as a department store. Wow, did I ever really look forward to Christmas. So I got this stash of five books uh, using this year's gift certificate. The first one is a manga, and this is a Blame It On Cousin of Always Doing by What Did You Eat Yesterday by Humi Yoshinoya. Ah, Yoshinaga, Humi Yoshinaga, and this is about, a, I think, a gay couple, or they're gay friends, I think they're a gay couple, and it's all about eating Japanese food and cooking Japanese food, 
I read a similar series, uh, the name of which escapes me, but it's very famous about Japanese food and enjoyed it. I'm always interested in learning more about Japanese food and any representation of gay life in Japan is interesting to me. So thank you for telling me about it, cousin. And here I got volume one. I think there's 20 volumes in the series or something. And Humi Yoshinaga is a female manga artist and who specializes in gay stuff. There's a whole, I forget the name of it, but there's a whole genre of manga that's gay love stories written by, heteros written by heterosexual female manga artists, I think exclusively, but I may be wrong. That may be too general of a statement. But then the target audience is young, straight, fe Japanese females. Anyway, I don't think this one's sexy. It would be a nice surprise if it was, but it's definitely foodie. Those of you who were really paying attention when Electra and I went to the bookstore the other day will remember that one of the first books I picked up off the stack was this one, The Deeper the Water, The Uglier the Fish by Katya Apakina. And I went back after I got my Christmas gift certificate and bought it. I liked the writing. I, I really debated about it because it's a very young story. The main character, at the at least at the beginning of the novel, is, is 16 years old, Edie. And I'm not sure if Edie is a yeah, Edie is a young young woman, a girl, and her sister. They find their mother has committed suicide at the opening of the novel, and it goes from there. But I really like the writing, and you know. Sometimes with a really well-written novel, even though it's about really young people, I can connect with it. So I decided to take a gamble. Page 112 was wonderful. And I, because I wasn't sure, I read a couple other pages and I said, yeah. I'm going to read you the first paragraph. But before I do that, a little bit about the author, Apikina, Katya Apikina. She was born in Moscow and lives in Los Angeles. I believe this is her debut. She is a screenwriter and a translator as well. But also about this publishing company, which I had never heard of. It's called Two Dollar Radio. Have any of you heard of it? This is a really beautifully put together French flaps book. And there's several pages of the other stuff in the back that they print. And it looks, I've never heard of any of these books, which maybe that's a bad thing but they just sound interesting so check out their web page two dollar radio.com and i'm if i like this especially there's about uh, six pages of their other other print books available at the back so curious about that all right chapter one is the title is edith 1997. it's our second day in new york city we're with dennis lomack Mum is in St. Vincent's, resting. She has recently done something very stupid, and I'm the one who found her. Dennis has been taking us around town, trying to get our minds off of everything. Trying to make up for the last decade. So I think I spoke in error when I said her mother committed suicide. I think she attempted suicide. Anyway, I am looking for a buddy reader and looking forward to giving this a try. This one I had heard about and heard a lot about, and I believe the one of the first people that I heard rave about it was Steve Donahue. But I think also just one reader, but I may have that wrong, but certainly some really reputable, enthusiastic uh, comments about this novel. The Last Samurai by Helen DeWitt. And I was vaguely aware of the title, and that's all. And it's one of those books that it's kind of a sleeper, but it's... It's not as famous as it should be for how good it is. That's what I keep hearing about it. The opening. My father's father was a Methodist minister. He was a tall, handsome, noble-looking man. He had a deep, beautiful voice. My father was an ardent atheist and admirer of Clarence Darrell. He skipped grades the way other boys skip class. He lectured my grandmother's flock on carbon-14 and the origin of species, and he won a full scholarship to Harvard at the age of 15. Okay, well, that's a pretty interesting opening. And I think it's about a, maybe a single mother and her son and the secret of the, the boy's father or something, but there's something to do with samurai and a bunch of other stuff, so. And the last two of my Christmas money gift haul are books that I 
read or read part of, but I didn't have in paper copies. Now I do. First one was uh, probably the best book of short stories I read in 2017, Atrib, and other stories by um, Ellie Williams. I think it won the it won some literary prize for innovative fiction that year, and I read it on ebook about almost exactly a year ago, and I loved it so much, and I, w I wanted to get a copy eventually, and it was there in the bookstore, so now I have it. I'll read you the first few opening sentences of the. Of first story. The shorter title is The Alphabet. It's got a much longer subtitle, but we'll skip that. Here's the opening. The plot of this is not and will not be obvious. I'm pretending that this is not important. It is quite likely that I have lost it anyway. The plot. Related, where are my glasses? For some reason I find that if I say, glasses, glasses, in an authoritative way, while searching for them, it seems more likely that I shall find them, or that I will somehow invoke them into being. This is a strategy that does not work for finding one's dignity, nor for finding you. But glasses, possibly. It gives you an idea of the whimsicality of these really <laughs> quirky, wonderful short stories. And lastly, I put this book on hold, and this book I had as a NetGalley ebook. And if you've ever had to deal with one of those, they're shit. I've stopped dealing with NetGalley because I'm just not good at fulfilling my obligations. Because most of the books that are on there are garbage. But this one was not garbage. It was really intriguing, but. The ebook formatting is non-existent, so everything is scrunched together. You can't really see where there's section breaks. And that was not the main reason that I didn't finish the novel, that I put it on hold. <coughs> but it did make it more difficult to read. And so I have now perused and now acquired the hard copy, the soft cover copy of The Stolen Bicycle by Wu Ming Yi. I read about half of it, I think and just couldn't continue with it. I had other problems with it. It's a really slow burn, but the actual copy does a lot with font changes and section headings and even different shadings and artwork, none of which, none of which is in the, there's a chapter heading. There's all kinds of font changes where you can easily see what is being excerpted from another source and all kinds of epigraphs in various, in uh, Chinese and so on and so on. And I, I can't immediately find it, but I thought there was even some photos or illustrations. Maybe not illustrations. But anyway, I'm going to try again, maybe this year, and I am definitely looking for somebody who's willing to buddy read it with me. Ideally, somebody who's familiar with Taiwanese slash Chinese culture but that's not a uh, uh, prerequisite but somebody to kind of hold my hand and, and read through it together because it was really interesting but in a really slow moving way so it's not a page turner but I did enjoy what I read and I want to finish it all right so that's my end of year book haul have you read any of these books which ones would you be likely to pick up and so on and so forth thanks for watching and happy holidays.